Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our interview with Calvin Lee. Calvin is a co-founder and managing director at Risk ID, which is a company that markets a collaborative risk management software that focuses on collaborative and collaboration and ease of use. Calvin, thank you for coming to our interview today. Thank you very much, of course. Calvin, could you tell us a short story about Risk ID and what you guys are up to these days? Yes, of course. Um, well, you already introduced me a, a bit, uh, but yeah, my name is Calvin Lee, and I am the co-founder of Risk ID, and um, I co-founded it uh, with two other university students uh, back in 2009 already. Uh, and at that time, uh, which is now already so 12 years ago, all three of us uh, freshly graduated from the Delft University of Technology in the Netherlands, and we studied uh, information technology together. And in the study, there was a course called Collaboration Engineering. Um, it basically teaches you techniques to improve group work. And one of the techniques is a software called Group Support Software, GSS in short. And we relate, we relate those collaboration techniques we learned in school to create our own risk management software, which you briefly mentioned uh, in your introduction. And uh, remember that back in 2009, we were in the middle of the financial crisis and risk management was uh, suddenly very hot at that moment. Uh, basically, every time there is a big disaster happen, happening, risk management suddenly pops up again. Right, right now, also with the pandemic, risk management becomes uh, a topic again. Um, so suddenly, uh, at that time, everybody was doing risk assessment sessions uh, left and right. But they also saw the shortcomings of those uh, posted sessions. Do you remember those? For example, dominant people overshadowing the silent ones, unreadable handwriting, some look <laughs> like prescriptions you get from the doctor. Uh, it was just long and boring sessions. So uh, for that reason, we developed Risk ID to specifically improve the support of online risk assessment sessions, making them easier to do for everybody and us also much more effective and ultimately maybe a bit more fun as well. So to answer your second question, what am I? Up to these days, uh, well, mostly providing online demos to prospects. Oftentimes, they come to us and want a better way to facilitate online risk assessment sessions. Because with COVID, you can't even do those posted sessions anymore, even if you want to. So next to that, I'm working on our foreign expansions. Uh, so talking to potential partners in other countries to help us market Risk ID overseas. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So, uh, how Risk ID differs from other software providers in this space? And because there are a lot of companies that are doing the same. And what are some examples of uh, your customers' use case? Yes, yes. You're right. A lot of uh, software vendors right now. And uh, uh, you rightfully mentioned in your intro uh, the two key points we are focusing on is collaborative risk management and ease of use. And allow me to elaborate or elaborate those two aspects in more detail. So first on the collaboration part, we believe, we truly believe effective risk management can only be achieved by involving all stakeholders, your team members, your colleagues and raising their risk awareness. But it needs to be uh, in a very simple and practical way. So don't get me wrong. I also think that risk calculations with percentages and exact amounts of euros is very important uh, with Monte Carlo, et cetera. That part is in risk ID as well. But ultimately, garbage in is garbage out. So the very first step is to get your team or colleagues to become aware of their risk and share it with other team members. You need to know and understand what is bothering your colleagues because we are all on the same boat. We need to share our experiences and knowledge. Once that is clear, then we can analyze the risk with those models and see what we want to do with them. So the risk identification and analysis part is very important, very important first step to do it properly and collaboratively, very important to do it together. And we have designed our software to optimally support just that. Um, and then the ease of use part, uh, that's the second uh, USP of ours, because it is directly linked to our first obje objective to involve all stakeholders in the process. You can't achieve that if you present them an overly complicated software, right? So now with our iPhones, everybody demands is easy to use software, but the current risk management software vendors on the market make the user feel like they are operating the cockpits of the Boeing 737 Max. 
so it, it doesn't attract them to use it. Uh, maybe it's acceptable for risk officers to use those kind of complicated software because it's their job. But for the normal users joining your risk session, they don't really like that. Now, of course, all uh, vendors will tell you their software is user friendly, like us. We also say that. But we, what we do differently is this. Uh, while other vendors say their software is user friendly, our software is scientifically proven to be user friendly. While other software vendors say their software is effective and eff efficient, our software is scientifically proven to be uh, identifying and evaluating risk in 60% less time than conventional methods. So we have uh, uh, written, uh, not, not us, but other uh, uh, academics have written papers and book chapters about it and published it uh, on uh, software uh, in uh, so uh, scientific software journals and research presentations has been done on this topic as well. So that's the difference. We really make risk management collaborative and easier. And uh, to briefly answer your second question, um, our, our clients are using the software uh, right now uh, to do online risk assessment sessions. They are home. Uh, they range from strategic risk sessions to project risk sessions. And uh, they also use our dashboards to monitor risk and measures. Because once you have run the risk assessment steps in Risk ID, you've created a massive risk ownership at the business. So the team members will manage their own risk for, for themselves. Uh, without you having to chase them. Um, we have some reference cases from clients on our website. Uh, if the viewers are interested in details, use cases, uh, you can find them there. All right. So uh, we are just now in the uh, uh, still prolonging COVID saga. How has COVID impacted you and your clients? And perhaps what are your insights on uh, how the pandemic have impacted the way organizations uh, approach risk and compliance? Yes, uh, so we can't circumvent COVID every time you hear COVID everywhere. So uh, for us, it's, a, it's the same thing. COVID is everywhere. Um, I have to say the imposed COVID measures uh, all over the world, which is to work from home as much as possible, has given Risk ID uh, much more exposure and new clients. Um, because even before COVID, we advocated that it is much more effective and efficient to do risk identification and scoring online. Uh, so we are getting popular. I think the pandemic has accelerated digitalization in organizations and therefore also in the risk and uh, compliance departments. Or maybe you, can, uh, you could even say exposed risk departments that they are behind in their digitalization. Um, look, I understand that there are risk consultants preaching that's all about building a risk culture and that you don't need software to do that, etc. And I agree, risk culture is the key success factor to risk management. And I also agree that it's better not to use any software than to use bad software. Mm -hmm. However, we are uh, currently in a digital age with technology everywhere. And there are definitely good tools out there to support risk managers in their work, which is to help their organization grow in risk maturity, but step by step. So, um, some organizations are still in the early stages of risk management, and there are tools and technology to help them. Some are using Excel. And by the way, uh, if you think about it, post-its and even a pen and paper are technology in that definition. I bet the risk consultants are at the least using pen and paper to write their risk culture Bibles. So you, you're using technology either way. Um, for every organization out there, the pandemic has forced them to think of uh, technological ways to help them with their risk management. And with the COVID, it's difficult, but it doesn't have to be because there are good tools that can help them. Okay. So uh, from your uh, observation, what are the biggest risk and uh, compliance challenges for your customers right now? How have these challenges changed since the uh, outbreak of uh, the pandemic? <laughs> yes. Uh, well, if you think about it, uh, risk and compliance aren't sexy topics. Uh, some might even think uh, they are hindrances. Um, if you're talking to board members, they all, all they wanna know and talk about is maximizing profit and shareholder value. So risk aren't really in, on the agenda. So for many of our clients, uh, the main challenge is how to get people's attention for risk management, how to show and prove that risk management can help their organization to achieve their objectives. So ultimately, how to make risk management sticky. That's always been the challenge. 
now uh, same as uh, with the COVID. And uh, I believe to achieve this stickiness, uh, you have to simplify the risk analysis and risk management processes, make them more attractive in order to involve all stakeholders in the process, get them to see the added value by doing it properly and gradually moving uh, towards a higher maturity level. So I don't think uh, COVID has changed the challenges itself. It's, it has always been the same uh, for risk and compliance uh, officers. It only made it harder to solve without technology. Mm. I mean, everyone is working from home at the moment. How are you going to uh, uh, make risk sessions interesting? Uh, screen sharing your Excel? Uh, I don't think so. Mm -hmm. So let me ask you a personal opinion. Uh, what is the commonly held belief uh, as it relates to risk management that you strongly disagree with? Yeah, um, that's a good question. Um, I think uh, what I mentioned uh, earlier, I disagree uh, to the belief that technology or software doesn't help in improving risk management or risk culture in an organization. I think we need technology to do better risk management and that the pandemic we are all in now only uh, solidifies this statement and urges us to transition towards more but suitable technological support for risk management. Um, ultimately, I think there are better technology available to us now than Excel or Post-it. I mean, Excel might be the best tool 12 years ago, but it has changed since then. Mm -hmm. So, uh, what do you think about the trends in the future and uh, in, in the next few years uh, uh, with regards to the risk management and compliance? And what, what should we expect from you guys in the future? Yeah, um, it's, it's uh, busy times at us at Risk ID. And um, uh, traditionally, uh, we stayed in the risk domain. So our software is specifically designed to support the risk management processes. Uh, however, um, getting more and more clients, uh, they want us to support those risk-related domains as well, uh, like compliance or incident management. Before we stayed away from those domains, we focus on risk uh, uh, management and we connect with other systems to support those uh, auditing and, and compliance uh, uh, modules. But um, since the clients uh, are demanding it or requesting it, we are now actually building our own compliance module, uh, which is going to be released in a few months. And then we are going to build other modules as well, like instance and audit. So we are expanding our horizon, so to speak. And uh, yeah, th that's, that's uh, going uh, to uh, be a challenging time for us to you know, go towards a more GRC system than we have been a risk management system right now. Oh, uh, sounds a very exciting time. Uh, so uh, let's finalize. If someone who is listening to this interview would like to walk away from it with uh, one or two major takeaways, what would that be? Uh, yeah, that's a hard one. Uh, well, um, yeah, let me think about that. Mm. Well, I always say as a professional, any professional, um, working professional, you have to reject over complicated software because nowadays uh, programmers really can't make their users suffer anymore like they used to. Uh, we have to think as a software vendor how to make everything uh, more effective and user-friendly. I think that is a very important principle in today's environment, uh, not to pay too much for things you don't really use so I think that is uh, something as a software vendor, I want to give uh, our viewers, you know, um, think about what you need and search for something that really suits your uh, work. Mm 